إن الفقيه هو الفقيه بفعاله ليس الفقيه بنطقه ومقاله وكذا الرئيس هو الرئيس بخلقه ليس الرئيس بقومه ورجاله وكذا الغني هو الغني بحاله ليس الغني بملكه وبماله بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه ما بعد Today's characteristic that we'll be doing is one of the primary reasons why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the book and it has been compared with almost to the level of the importance of Tawheed itself as we will see and that is the characteristic of being just Adil, Qistas the characteristic of the believer is that the believer is fair the believer practices justice and equality. You know the verse that every khatib around the globe recites every single Jumu'ah. Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'idil qurba. Allah commands justice. This is the verse that is universally recited around the globe, instituted by the Khalifa Umar ibn Abdul Aziz 1,100 years ago. He started this verse and every khatib follows because it is a comprehensive verse. Allah commands you, number one, with adl. Inna Allah ya'muru al adli wal ihsani wa ita'idil qurba. And ihsan and giving to your relatives and the verse goes on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَزِنُوا بِالْقِسْطَاسِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ We are commanded to put the scales of justice with equality. The word Arabic, قِسْطَاس, by the way, I've said this many times, it is an Arabic cognate, which means it comes from another word in Latin. And the Latin word is eustis. From the Latin word eustis, the ancient Arabs took قِسْطَاس and they made it an Arabic word, قِسْطَاس. From the Latin word eustis, English justice. So when we say Arabic, قِسْطَاس, English justice, it sounds the same because it's from the same root, the Latin root of eustis. So we can literally say that the Quran is commanding justice with the word justice. وَزِنُوا بِالْقِسْطَاسِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Allah says in the Quran there are two verses very similar to each other, but there's a slight twist in it, or there's a slight swapping. Listen to this, Surah An-Nisa, Allah says, that, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُونُوا قَوَّامِينَ بِالْقِسْطِ شُهَدَاءَ لِلَّهِ O you who believe, كُونُوا قَوَّامِينَ بِالْقِسْطِ Stand up for justice, قِسْط, قِسْطَاس, justice. Stand up for justice, شُهَدَاءَ لِلَّهِ Witnesses to Allah, Allah is watching you as you are just. Then Allah says, وَلَوْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَوِ الْوَالِدَيْنِ وَالْأَقْرَبِينَ Even if that justice has to be against yourselves, or against your parents, or against your close relatives. Even if that justice means that you have to say something that is against your mother and father, but it is the truth, it is the justice, then Allah is saying, Allahu awla bihima. Allah has more right than your own mother and father when it comes to justice. Subhanallah. The hukuk of the walidain are not as important as the hukuk of justice. What is fair is fair. And this is the essence of justice. Because what is justice? Justice means you judge a person by the action and not because of the person. Regardless of who the person is, regardless of whether it's your mother or father, your cousin or relative, it's your tribe or clansmen, or whether it's somebody else. Justice, and you know in the Western world, the symbol of justice is Lady Justice. She's blindfolded with the scales. Why is she blindfolded? The metaphor here, the symbolism here, it should be irrelevant who is standing in front of you. Justice means everybody's treated the same, regardless of who they are, depending on what they have done. And the Quran is explicit. Even if it is against your mother and father, justice has a higher virtue than speaking on behalf of your mother and father. What is true is true. What is fair is fair. If they've done a crime, if they've done something wrong and the court comes or you have to testify, Allah says, In Surah Al-Ma'idah, the two phrases are swapped around. O you who believe, It's swapped around. O, o you who believe, Stand for justice. 
قوامين بالقسط شهداء لله كونوا قوامين بالقسط شهداء لله they swap it around sorry that stand for justice witnesses to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then Allah says even if it is against your own enemies ولا يجرمنكم شنآن قوم على ألا تعدلوا make sure Allah says that your hatred for your enemy does not cause you to act with injustice اعدلوا even with your enemy be just that is the essence of piety. Notice in these verses, the most difficult things. Number one, family and friends. Allah says justice is higher. Number two, your enemies. Allah says be careful. Just because you hate somebody, just because you don't like somebody, still justice is more important. And if you are judging or you must get involved, then make sure that your own intentions are pure. And Allah is saying, make sure your own animosity and hatred does not cause you to turn away from justice. Justice. اعدلوا هو أقرب للتقوى. Be just. That is the essence of taqwa. And that is why justice is of the core values of our faith. Allah says in the Quran to the Prophet Sallallahu that say to the people that وأمرت أن أعدل بينكم that I have been commanded to treat you all with justice. And you know the famous treaty of Aqaba that took place, the first and the second treaty of Aqaba, the first oaths that the Prophet Sallallahu undertook. What was the wording of that oath? The first Aqaba treaty that took place three years before the Hijrah, Ubadah ibn Samit said, the Prophet wasallam took the oath of allegiance from us that we hear and we obey regardless of our circumstances and that we always speak with adil, with justice. This was in the treaty of Aqaba that you have to be fair. Justice has to be there in all of your interactions. So the concept of justice is core to our faith. And our Prophet wasallam was sent to establish the kitab and the mizan to establish the book and the scales of justice and if you want to see how important justice is all you need to do is to look at the evil of its opposite the arabs have a saying that by the opposites shall you understand look at how evil the opposite is you will see how important justice is what is the opposite of justice Vulm. And subhanallah, zulm has been equated with shirk. In the shirk ala zulmun azim. Zulm and shirk have been equated together. And Allah Azza wa Jal has cursed the zalimeen. Ala la'natullahi ala zalimeen. That is the worst thing to have Allah's curse. And Allah says the zalim has no wali and nasir. Nobody is going to help the zalim. Allah Azza wa Jal has linked the destruction of villages and civilizations to their zulm. That Allah says in the Quran that akhdu rabbika wa hiya zalima. Look at how Allah Allah has taken these civilizations while they were doing zulm. Allah links destructions of civilization to zulm. And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, الظُّلْمُ ظُلُمَاتٌ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Injustices, of course it's a play on words, zulm and zulumat. Zulumat means darkness. Zulm is injustice. The Prophet sallallahu said, any injustice will become a source of calamity, a source of grief on the day of judgment. الظُّلْمُ ظُلُمَاتٌ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ In one hadith he said, O oh people, any zulm that you have done, make sure that you get rid of it in this world. Make it tahleel, get rid of this zulm. Make sure you have no zulm on your plate before the day of judgment comes in which there will be no gold and silver. In which on that day, any zulm, Allah Azza wa Jal will call you to task and you will have to pay, not with gold and silver, with your good deeds. And our scholars say there are three types of zulm. One zulm Allah will never forgive, that is shirk, if you die upon shirk. Another zulm Allah will never let go, there will be hisab, and that is zulm between people. Any zulm you have done to somebody else, any injustice. And the third zulm is the one that Allah can forgive, that is something you've done against yourself. Your private sins, Allah is ghafoor and rahim. But the zulm between people, that is never forgiven without the other person forgiving. Allah will never let it go. And that's why our Prophet ﷺ said that beware, O people, of the mazloom making dua against you. Beware, because nothing comes between the dua of the mazloom and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another hadith, he said, the dua of the one who has been wrong, it shoots up straight to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah gives a qasam, the hadith in Abu Dawood. Allah swears to this dua, وَعِزَّتِي وَجَلَالِي لَأَنصُرَنَّكِ وَلَوْ بَعْدَحِينَ I swear by my honor and izza, I shall defend you, even if it is after some time. Our Prophet said, 
Allah Azza wa Jal might give some leeway to the zalim, but Allah never allows the zalim complete uncontrolled. Some time, maybe, but Allah never allows the zalim to go unaccounted for. That's not the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-zulmu dhulumatun yawm al-qiyamah. And Ibn Taymiyyah has a very profound remark which we see the reality in front of our eyes, a painful reality. Ibn Taymiyyah says that it is known that the nation and civilization that practices justice shall be protected and blessed even if it is a kafir nation. And the nation and civilization that does not have justice will not be protected. They will not have that sanctity even if it is a Muslim nation. And we see and open our eyes. Wallahi, bitter reality. Bitter reality. We have more justice in many of these lands, all of these lands, than we have many times in lands that our ancestors or some of us have come from. And that is one of the reasons why there is a sense of more izzah. There is a sense of higher GDP. Let's be honest here. There is a sense of more clout. Why? Why is it that some civilizations are more blessed than others? Ibn Taymiyyah, and this is actually based on a hadith in al-Tabarani actually. There's a hadith in al-Tabarani that the Prophet himself is reported to have said that the, 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 the note, the, the qawm or the people that are just, they will have some protection even if they don't have iman. And the ones that have no justice, they will not have protection even if they have iman. So Ibn Taymiyyah is taking it from these types of notions. It's not out of thin air. And we see this reality. We see this reality. A nation that professes Islam and yet the rich and powerful get away. And they don't have to worry about sins and crimes. And they are doing what they are doing. And the weak are the ones that suffer? No, this is not justice. Justice, you deal with everybody equally, regardless of who they are. When the Prophet ﷺ conquered Mecca, the first case of crime occurred there. A lady from the Shurafa, from the very elite of the Banu Makhzum, one of the cousins of Abu Jahl, a very, very respectable lady, she was caught stealing a pearl necklace. She was caught and it was confirmed that she stole. So they said, oh, this is a Sharifa. This is Banu Makhzum. This is our elite. Yani, krem de la krem. We can't do this. So why don't we send Usama ibn Zayd? Let Usama is the one the Prophet you know, raised in his household. He loved Usama, you know, the son of Zayd. So Usama was the one the Prophet loved. They said, let us send Usama. Let us see if he can huh, get her out. Usama went and made shafa'ah and said, Ya Rasulullah, she is, you know, Sharifa, she is Bani Makhzum, she is so and so. The Prophet became so angry, rarely would he raise his voice. Rarely would he speak in a loud voice. On this occasion, his face became red with anger and his voice became high. And he said, are you daring to come to me to intercede on behalf of someone who has done this crime? Wallahi, if my own daughter Fatima committed this crime, I would implement the had upon her. And then he said in another version, the same ver the notion that I said, that no nation shall flourish when the da'if will have the haqq against him, but the sharif will not have the haqq against him. No nation will flourish like that. That's not how a civilization flourishes. So we learn from our sharia that justice transcends who we are and who our families are. And subhanAllah, we, we know our nations back home are corrupt. We always blame politicians, this, that. All of this is true, but Allah is not going to ask us about them. Allah is going to ask us about me and you. So let us look in our own lives. How fair are we? Let us look how are we treating our family and friends. If my son does something wrong, if my cousin does something wrong, will I have a double standard or not? Let's look at how we're treating our own children. Our Prophet even wanted justice between children. They should be treated equally. Let us see justice in our own daily lives. And the final interesting anecdote, our books of history mention this very famous incident. When Ali radiallahu an became the governor, sorry, the Khalifa, and he was in Kufa, he was the Khalifa of the Muslims. Somebody broke into his house and stole his armor. A few weeks later, he comes across the armor being sold in the marketplace. Some of the Yahudi merchant, he had it. So Ali radiallahu an said, this is my armor. This is, I see it, somebody stole it from my house. And the merchant said, no, it's mine. And possession is nine tenths of the law I have it you what's your what's your evidence so Ali took him immediately to the Qadi of Kufa his name was Shurayh very famous person Shurayh al-Qadi and uh, the, the Qadi sat them down and, and he said to Ali what is the evidence that this is your armor so Ali said oh Hassan can testify Hassan come here testify Hassan testified 
Shura'i said, this is the testimony of a son for the father. And you don't have any other testimony. You don't even have two witnesses. He said to the Yahudi, what is your evidence? Yahudi said, I don't need an evidence. The default, if I own it, it's mine. So Shura'i said, in that case, it's going to be considered to be yours. Before he could finish that sentence, the Yahudi says, I testify that I got this via dubious means. And any nation and civilization where the Khalifa does not need to prove Rather, the verdict will be against him. That is a nation and civilization that must be upon the truth. So the Yehudi merchant converted to Islam in that gathering, seeing the testimony and the justice that was meted out even against the Khalifa because he didn't have the two witnesses. He didn't have the evidence, so he would have been ruled against. This is what justice does. And that's why, by the way, the Khulafa al-Rashidun were who they were. That's why there was Izzah. They didn't have the GDP. They didn't have the weapons. They didn't have... But what they had was their iman, their trust, their taqwa, and their justice. And because of that, Allah blessed them. Now we look at our own, Wallahu musta'an. So khair, we leave our nations in our own lives. Let us be just. I'diru huwa aqrabu lit taqwa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who are just. And inshallah, we'll continue tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wabarakatuh. <laughs> ليس الفقيه بنطقه ومقاله وكذا الرئيس هو الرئيس بخلقه ليس الرئيس بقومه ورجاله وكذا الغني هو الغني بحاله ليس الغني بملكه وبماله